Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, it's part two of my coloring book collection from January 2021 through June 2021. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so in the last video, I will create a playlist, and so it'll be in the description box below of my collection video series. But in the last video, I did end with this. This is my long-term uh, collection reference book. This is a Maisie Lane Co. A5 bullet journal, and I got it personalized. And what I'm doing is I am tracking certain things that I don't necessarily want to have in a variety of books that are year specific. This is just going to be ongoing. So just to recap, it's got my reading log, um, just some cute little things I've done, books that I reread, movies that I've seen, and generally it's movies on TV. I'm not about to go to a theater. I wasn't really about that life before the pandemic. I'm certainly not about that life now. These are television shows that I've seen. I know that I need to update this, but it's in my daily journal, so I have that information. Uh, when I first started my coloring book journey back in January 2021, I was very naive and thinking, yeah, no, 20 spots is more than enough space for that. <laughs> it wasn't um and then it just goes into a variety of other trackers i did try to do what's in my bag for may 2021 but i didn't write down any of my plans and so i couldn't complete whether or not i did it or not because I didn't write it down and I didn't want to watch the video. So that's just not going to be something I do. This is a continuation of my coloring book inventory. I actually still need to update this, but I think I'm going to have to put them all in a, a Excel sheet so I can sort by author because this is just based on when they're coming in. And yeah, that's it's it's kind of confusing for me, but I do want to update this. And so what we're going to be talking about now is completed pages in the next series of books. I'm classing them as fantasy books. I am also tracking my buddy colors or my butter colors, as I like to call it. And so I do have several uh, ongoing for this month, mostly with Poet Spice because she and I are both kind of crazy. And then I've got the listing of books here that go into each section. And I'll talk a little bit more at the end of the video, uh, but that way in six months time, then I can see, do I still have these books? And what are the numbers from now until then? So the first one I'm going to show you is Camila Derrico's Pop Manga. I did pick this up in Walmart and I did complete one page in here. I actually really like this artwork. I might be doing another page in here. Let me show you. Which is this one right here. Olga Rani's July 2021 monthly color along is Strange Creatures. And I definitely think she would fall under that. I mean, it's definitely a humanoid, but it's certainly not full on human. I think quite a few of the pictures in here would class as that. Strange is subjective. So strange doesn't need to be super fantastical or ugly or gruesome. It can just be outside the norm and so that's what i am considering this page so this definitely might be colored this month to go towards that hashtag but her art's really cute i believe she has two other books a mermaid's one and the cute and creepy i like them i like the artwork uh, i actually don't like mermaids as much as many people do um, so if I were going to get another one, I'd probably get the cute and creepy, but to be honest, I like the book and I certainly like flipping through it, but it's not one of the ones that I have been coloring a lot in, obviously. And so I don't really want to pick up the rest of her series, um, until I finish more of this one. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, cause I'm, I'm not a completist in that re regards. I know some people like to have all of the artwork by a certain artist and I am that way for some, but not for the majority of my coloring books. If it's a one and done, it's, it's a one and done, but that's Camila Derrico's pop manga coloring book. 
This one here is Jasmine Beckett Griffith's A Fantasy Art Coloring Adventure. And I have a whip in here. I haven't actually finished anything in here. This one, I do like going through her artwork. I love flipping through here. The page is quite nice. This is done in Prismas. I would like to finish her for July. Again, it's one of those ones I like looking at the pictures, but if I'm thinking about doing a picture of a girl, I don't know that I would necessarily gravitate towards this one, but I'm glad I have it. I don't foresee needing any of her other artwork. I think there's an eclectic enough mixture in here of a variety of styles. I know she has quite a few. I did get this from Book Depository, and yeah, that's Jasmine Beckett Griffith, a coloring book, fantasy art adventure. This one is one of my newer acquisitions. This is Josh Lee's Fantasy Collection. I did purchase this in May. I did finish two pages in here. This is the very first page I completed and I love the color scheme of her. I think his artwork is really interesting. The girls are cute, but not too cutesy. They're definitely kind of an anime style. I don't know, I just, I really like his work. And then the other one I did was a buddy color with my friend Poet Spice, and we recently did this one. Now it is the Create Space paper, but because it is single-sided, um, you can use pretty much any of your mediums in here. I really like it, and as you can tell, I like keeping a white background a lot of the times because then you really focus on what the page is. And the way that the art is on here, some of it is framed out like this. But this, to me, the white creates the frame because of how much space it takes in the center. There are some pages like in Joanna Basford's World of Wonders, where you definitely have a center image, but the outside seems wasted. And so what I tend to do is kind of fill it up. For this one, I don't think that's necessary. But this is Josh Lee's fantasy collection. Um, I don't know if they're coming out with something new. I think on Coloring Heaven, they have a new compilation book, but I don't know if they're going to be doing another one via Amazon because that's where I purchase this. Now this is one of my annual collection books. This is uh, Coloring Heaven's annual 2021. And this is a whip. I just started this the other night. This was gonna go for this week's uh, challenge from Olga Rani. The weekly challenge for this week was mirrors. And so I thought that behind her would be a mirror, but then I decided to go with a different picture instead. This is probably the heaviest grayscale picture that I've worked on to date. And I have to say, I really enjoy it. Now this is just one uh, pass through of some alcohol markers. I think um, I'll either put some darker tones on here because I really uh, feel this is like a, a velvety kind of of a dress and so I want to try to encapture that and then I'll need, need to work on her skin for this background I might actually make it darker so that she really pops off the page I'm not sure but I really like the look of this and there's some more in here that's done in this really heavy gray scale and to me it just makes the shading that much easier i mean it looks so dramatic i didn't do anything but put one wash of color on here but yeah that is this now i purchased this off of etsy uh coloring heaven does have a shop front there um i think it's better than purchasing through their subscription because i don't know that i'll necessarily all like it but i specifically chose these and the next two you'll see because there is just a variety of different artwork in here so there are certain artists that I don't know that I'll ever purchase a single book, but I do like having some of their artwork at my disposal, like Hannah Lynn. I don't gravitate towards Hannah Lynn, but in each of the three Coloring Heaven collection books that I have, her artwork is featured. So if I do want to do something like... <laughs> 
My hashtag for this month, Joanna Lynn's Celebration 2021, I have different pictures at my disposal. So this is Annual 2021 from Coloring Heaven. This is Annual Collection 2020 from Coloring Heaven, and I completed this one. Now this one you'll see again in my July completed pictures because I did this July 2nd. Oh, I'll keep that for that reason. And um, it was actually uh, so I could post something on Instagram and I had not done anything by Hannah Lynn, and so I decided to do this one. I am super stoked about her. I don't know if you can see it. The background is done in Tombow alcohol markers and it's done purposely because I wanted to recede. That looked like jeans to me. I don't think steampunk people wear jeans, but I don't care. That looked like jeans. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I do like this kind of really lime green, vibrant uh, Tertruce color and so I did that and then I was only going to do her little flounce area here in the Kira Rich which is a highlighter that has glitter in it but it looks so cute I put it on everything I put it on her skin I put it on her hair uh, I just I think it looks so pretty so I really had fun with this although I did change up her eyes the way that I've seen Hannah Lynn eyes is that entire thing would be the pupil and that just looked weird to me and so I did give it some defined white space but I did finish this picture uh, in here. This is another one of those that has just a variety of different artists in here, like Kristen Caron. I think her pictures are really pretty, but I don't know that I would necessarily purchase one of her books singly. Now, uh, when I was doing my haul of this book, I said that this was my least favorite, but with how the other super grayscale one is coloring out, this one might actually come out really nicely. So yeah, it's I'm a little bit more intrigued by it than I was. But that's this Coloring Heaven collection, annual 2020, and that's by the Coloring Heaven Company. I think they're Anth Anthem Publishing. Uh, this is the final uh, Coloring Heaven collection book that I have. They only have three out. This is Annual 2019. Again, it's one of those collection books, and I completed this one. I uh, I need to look this artist up. It's Zan Von Zed because I really like the look of his girls. They're not super cutesy, and I, I kind of like that. Like This is Selena Fennec. I don't own any of her books. And I just, I don't know, that, that's a mermaid I could get next to. I think, I think they're just really interesting looking girls. But then there are some Hannah Lynn in here. There are some White Stag. There's just a variety of different images. Konoko Igusa, um, I think it's like the miniatures or, or whatever. I don't plan on owning any of those books either, but I have the artist, so just in case there's a hashtag I wanna participate in, I could still do it. So that's Annual 2019 from Coloring Heaven, one of their collection books. This was part of my subscription. I actually did sign up for a three month subscription. I have since canceled it. And this is the Steampunk Special by Coloring Heaven. And I did complete two pages in here. This one I did, this is mostly Ohuhu's. There are some glitter gel pen on here and some of this white mythical unicorn acrylic paint. And I really like how he came out. And then I have Distress Ink on the back. And then the other one I finished is this one. Now, to be honest, I think most people would consider this a whip, but I'm done with it. There's a whole bunch of blank space. I'm not even going to say it was intentional. I'm just, I'm done with the page. It's got a bit of a sky. She's all blue, like in shadow and bone. And that's it. I'm, I'm done. Um, there are some pages that I will come back and complete, but this is not one of them. Now, I do like this. This is by Matt and Don Davidson, but you definitely can see a difference in art style. So this is Dawn Davidson and it's a little bit more simplistic, although quite detailed. But then when you go into Matt Davidson, it gets really detailed. There's a really specific style that he has compared to Dawn. And I like that in, in this coloring book, there are the two different kinds, just depending on if you want something a little bit more focused on the person and if you want something a little bit more focused on a theme. 
but that is Steampunk Special by Matt and Don Davidson. This is my last Coloring Heaven book and this is the reason why I started this subscription is for this. This is Magical Fairy Tales Designs by Fabiana Atanasio, Fairy Tale Stories, and I did this one here, Beauty and the Beast, and I think that came out really cute. And then I did this one here. And this probably is one of my favorite pictures because I just like how striking he is and how striking the clock is. Now I do like Fabiana Atanasio's work. I actually really like this coloring book. I'm not so happy that a lot of them are in this way. I don't like coloring this way. And so I'm probably gonna do more of the vertical ones first and then eventually go to these. But I think I do like this better than the coloring books that she has because all of these are single coloring books because those are double-sided. And here I can use an alcohol marker and that is one of my favorite mediums to use. So I I don't know that I'll be picking those up, even though I'm not a huge fan of the horizontal orientation pictures. But that is Fairy Story Special, Fabiana Atanasio from Coloring Heaven. Okay, we have this one, Winged Beauty. This one and the last one, I think there's only one more after this, I did purchase from my friend Susie's Cottage. You may want to check out her Facebook page. I'm not sure if she's still de-stashing, but if she is, it'll be on her page. This has five different artists in it, and I've done two pictures. And so I did this one right here for one of Olga Rani's Finding Color Challenges. You'll see a theme going on <laughs> as I'm talking uh, through my coloring books and the th uh, theme for that week was beard and I think that came out really nice and that artwork is by Renee Taylor and then I did something in the next section was Corey Godby and then this was this picture here that wasn't for any kind of particular challenge uh, just as I was flipping through this book that was the most striking picture to me and that was uh, the very first picture I used my Albert Durer watercolor pencils on. And then the other artists are Stephanie Law. And so it's very sketchy. And then Ruth Sanderson, it's definitely more detailed. Not detailed to the point where I find it cont and intimidating, but definitely more detailed. And then the final artist is Charles Vess. And sketchy, but differently. There's a different vibe going on with this one. And I like it. This is definitely one of the ones I like to flip through, especially for Olga's challenges, because sometimes the prompts are just a, a bit out there. And so I like having a variety of different books I can go into. It is small. It's probably like an eight by eight. And so it is a, a pretty quick coloring unless you're doing the Ruth Sanderson, which is super detailed. But this is Winged Beauty, a fairy tale coloring book. And this is actually done by Fairy Magazine. Yeah. Which I guess is along the lines of like coloring heaven. I don't know. I've never seen that. I don't know if that's a British thing because uh, that's where Susie lives or what, but that's Winged Beauty and I really like this one. All right. The final uh, coloring book in this collection is Mouse Guard by David Peterson. This I also purchased from uh, Susie at Susie's, Susie's Cottage and I'll link her channel below. And then I completed this page. This was the very first find and color challenge that I participated in. And this is the, the snail that was the focus. I really like this. This is one of the first pages I used my Brett Funners on and I really like that as a colored pencil. Now the artwork in here is absolutely gorgeous. And so it's definitely something I want to work in. It's definitely something I'm going to keep in my collection. And I know that when people do their collection videos, they're, they're like, oh, I need to work in that. I need to work in that. I'll work in my books as time and energy permits, but I definitely don't want to have so many books that that can't be a thing. So whether I get to this in July or August, if there's a prompt that I want to do from Olga or Poet or Emma or Erica or Kay or anyone, um, I have a variety of different books at my disposal that I can do that in, but I don't want to have such a large collection that it's only during a collection video I'm like, 
oh, I forgot I had that. I, I might forget I've completed a page. I don't want to forget that I've had a book. And that's, that's just for me, for my own purposes. But that's the final book there. So let's look at the stats. And so for the fantasy collection, as I'm classing this, there were 10 books in this video. I've done 12 completed pages with two whips that I actually want to complete. And I'm hoping to get those done this month. I've got a lot of buddy colors from Poet Spice. Let's see, I think I wrote them down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because the Mythomorphia is two pages. I know we're getting some new books. We might do more. And it's not like a buddy color where I have to get it done in July. These are just pages we have earmarked that we wanna to color together. Whether we get them all done by this weekend, whether we get them all done by who knows, we were, we've done that focus with my other buttercolors this month. I'd like to get them done by the end of the month. That's just, that's just my goal. But yeah, that is video number two, fantasy of my coloring book collection. And this goes from January, 2021 through June, 2021. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see any flip throughs. Now I'm not great at them, but if you're interested, I certainly can put a quick video together for you guys. That's it for me for now. And as always, aloha.